Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to Forza Motorsport 4. Today is episode number 27. If you guys are enjoying the content, then be sure to leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, and feel free to hit that join button as it really does help support the channel. Hopefully you guys enjoy. This episode was streamed live on YouTube. If you want to make sure to catch the streams, then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we're here for the C-Class International Tour. We're going to be taking the BMW E30 M3, because it's cool. Uh, starting off with Road Atlanta, Infineon Raceway, Magello, Indianapolis, Sebring, Silverstone, and then Hockenheim Ring. Let's get going. Right, here we go. Doubt comes in on sticks, but then he kicks like a horse. Yeah, stream's probably going to finish in about an hour's time or so. Oh my gosh, so much contact. Not how but bold. How but bold. What a tune. This is one of those songs that I think is going to go down in history. One hand in this. Uh. There we go. Lovely. Yo, Callum, what up? How are you today? Welcome. Please say you remember me. Hi. Name rings a bell. Name rings a bell. It rings a bell. Ah. Uh, I did see, I did see. Um, you saw my Instagram story. I did see your name pop up on my Instagram story. So, oh, I'm trying to remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to think, because if it was from Twitch, it would have been a different username, wouldn't it? I'm shit with names. If, if you couldn't tell already, I am shit with names. <laughs> A McDonald's bag Q&A. <laughs> oh my gosh. No fucking way. That was, what, four years ago? Damn! That was... Holy shit! That was December 2019. That was almost four years ago. That's... No! Okay. Fuck. I remember now. <laughs> no way! Oh, that's in That's mad. That's mad. For, for anyone who doesn't know, it's waiting on Twitch for you for ages. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been. I haven't streamed on Twitch in eight months now, so. I haven't streamed in ages. All YouTube now. I love this song. Hot Ride by the Prodigy. Absolute tune. Oh, I need to do a Q&A video like that. I need to do another Q&A video where I... St I mean, I stuck a bag on my head. <laughs> That's fucking great.
Last time I watched you, it was the Mad Max. Yeah, Mad Max was a while ago. Fucking hell. It's been some time since I did that. I still haven't finished Mad Max. Like, even though I haven't obviously done a video for it in ages, because I gave up on the series, I haven't finished the game itself. I've come back to it three times as well. Yeah. I couldn't finish it. It's, it, it's one of those games that looks cool. But there just isn't a lot to do after a while. I maybe didn't get far enough into it, but I just couldn't. I couldn't keep playing it. To be fair, there's a lot of series that are half finished on my channel. And obviously, this Forza one is one of the few series that I'm actually completing. I'm actually going to finish every single game. Fucking hope so. Yeah, it's too much time to make it along with everything else. If I remember, it was... Like an extra two hours? On top of every, like, the normal videos? Just because of the fact that was a lot of traveling and a lot of stuff that I needed to sort of crop out. And on top of that... There was no structure to Mad Max. There was no planning, nothing. Which a lot of the, a lot of my first series, there was no planning. Obviously, the, like, yeah, An extra two hours, but two hours for every video adds up, especially when you were already trying to push to get a video out every day, and you're in the middle of college work and everything. It's, it's it adds up. I mean, for me right now, if I'm doing videos and it adds an hour on tech, if I waste an hour of editing time, that's like potentially two or three videos edited. That's an hour of time I could be rendering that I'm not rendering because rendering time is useless. I can't do anything while I render videos. So I'm pretty much stuck doing nothing. So a lot of the stuff that, like planning-wise, especially like Forza is all planned out. I know exactly how Forza is going to go. So for the next two years, I know exactly how everything's going to be structured. There's been so much planning, thought, and consideration that's gone into this series that I can just sit down, crack on with it. And I know exactly what's happening. I can look at the footage afterwards. I know exactly what's happened with the footage. Because it's all planned in advance. Like, I haven't played the game before. I've played this one before, but not like finishing it. But I have all the planning in place. That I know what's going to happen. That I know what I'm anticipating. Stuff like that. When it comes to making series for like, other games... I mean, I haven't done a normal sort of just walkthrough of a different game yet. I think I'm going to do a walkthrough for Starfield. But it's going to be like live stream only. So it would be a stream archives and whatnot. But it's going to be a long, long game Starfield. I'm looking forward to Starfield. Which Forza do you do for the YouTube? So this one at the moment is for the YouTube. As like videos. So Motorsport 4 is being played for um, YouTube. Then if I'm streaming, say, I'm going to be streaming Starfield here. Like, I don't stream on Twitch anymore. So YouTube is the only platform that I'll stream on, make content for, etc, etc. But Instagram now. Instagram is like my second platform. But, um. Yeah. I mean, when I play Starfield, I'm going to be playing through the entire thing on stream. Once I play Starfield, the next one's called the company and took it off PlayStation. Yeah. 
I mean, that's kind of disappointing, but it's part of the reason why I bought a PC. Like, it's happened for years, unfortunately. Um, and it's only since recently, now that Xbox is starting to buy companies out, that people are like, hang on, no, Xbox, you can't do this. I think, yeah, I've still got PS5. I've got the PC, so any game that Xbox or Microsoft, uh, sorry, Xbox or PlayStation, Microsoft, Sony, whatever, any game that they make, I can play. Because I can play the Sony stuff off the PlayStation, and I can play Microsoft stuff off the PC. But th this kind of stuff, and obviously a lot of people are like, oh no, this Activision Blizzard thing is a bad thing, now that we... PlayStation people won't get certain games, and it's like, well, Xbox people didn't get a lot of games for a long time. Like, Gran Turismo, they still don't get. God of War, Spider-Man, Ratchet and Clank, Little Big Planet, or Sackboy, A Big Adventure now. Like, there's loads of titles that are so good. The Last of Us. They are phenomenal titles that are exclusive only to Sony. And we never complained about it before. But now because Microsoft are buying out titles... There's an issue with it. They're made by Sony, so that makes sense. And now that Microsoft owns it, Starfield's made by Microsoft, so it makes sense that Microsoft keeps it on their platforms. Like, I'm, I don't agree with platform exclusivity as a whole, but if Sony, as a company, are going to do it, it's all fair game for Microsoft and Nintendo to do it as well. Until both companies take their fingers out of their arseholes and say, right, we're putting all our games on Xbox and we're putting all our games on PlayStation, nothing's going to change. I think, realistically speaking... Obviously, it's not going to happen. But, I mean, I would love to see Starfield be on other platforms. Yeah, it'd be good, but it won't happen. It'll take a lot for that to happen, unfortunately. And the only thing that will cause it to happen is if a company like the FTC step up and say, right, platform exclusivity is no longer a thing. You must release content on all platforms. That's what it would take. Or that. But neither would give it up that easily. I mean, Microsoft may potentially give up Xbox for Sony to buy for a significant profit margin, mind you. Sony would never give up PlayStation because I mean most of Sony's profit is through PlayStation whereas Microsoft's, most of theirs is through other assets like Office, for example. Office makes a shit ton of profit for Microsoft as opposed to Xbox. Xbox is like nothing. Don't get me wrong though, Sony fucking love their hardware. This is a Sony headset that I've got right now. Sony headset, Sony speaker, Sony PlayStation. Office is overpriced as shit. Yeah. Office is ridiculously expensive, but it's expensive for a reason. Because it's one of the best, if not the best office platforms out there the second best is google i'll be honest google docs is pretty good for a free alternative it is very very good but google docs still isn't quite there with office the only reason i like google docs is because of the fact it's got like live sync and whatnot that it syncs between different devices like that but like 
Office is still... <laughs> there's no alternative that beats Office. I prefer Google over Sony. Eh. It depends what you what you run about, but uh, I, I can definitely... Not Sony. Off oh. Yeah, I mean, I prefer Google over Office as well. I'll be honest. But Office itself has tools that are just on, on other platforms. Like, the amount of times that I go and try to make a Google Doc and it just structures things wrong or it's not... It doesn't work like Office does. It's so hard to explain it as well without sitting there and trying to give you a demonstration of it. I don't use Office. I haven't used it in years, but there are certain... No, I haven't got an iPhone. I refuse to buy Apple products. iPhone, for example, is... I think iPhone, and I'm a very strong... You tried the Keynote app, is terrible. I believe I may have, um, but it would have been years, years and years ago. Uh, the issue that I have... I'm, I'm going on a bit of a tangent here, but it's sort of linked to the whole corporate greed subject we're talking about. When you look at... Uh, I don't like iPhone because of a few minor issues. Here's the problem. If I was minted and I had 10 grand to spend on the setup, 100% I would have a PC, a Windows PC for my games. I would have a Mac to use as like my capture device. So I would have a capture card going into a Mac that could then stream, edit videos, render, whatnot. Then I would have an iPhone, because that would mostly be used for connectivity with my productivity computer, which would be the Mac. I'd have an iPad. I'd have it all. Yeah, it's because of the ecosystem. But the difference between Apple's ecosystem and other ecosystems is Apple's is locked off completely. Using it with other devices, like... Using an iPhone with a Windows PC is fucking dog shit. Using anything, Apple, with something that isn't Apple, dog shit. And they do it deliberately because they want you to buy more Apple products. Which, fair enough. But it ruins the entire experience and point of that. I, I prefer Apple's operating system. Because it's basic, it's simple. Yeah, I'm, I know Android is more difficult as an operating system, but it does more what I need to. But at the same time, I would quite happily just give up all those extra little features just for an iPhone that is simple as fuck to use. That I wouldn't have to hassle about. But the difference is that's not how it works. But the difference between Sony and Xbox is Sony works with other devices still. Xbox works with other devices. You can send videos and photos through their respective apps so that you can load them up on your phone quite easily. You can send it to social platforms, all sorts. The difference with Apple is the fact you can't just plug in your iPhone and access the files. You have to download iTunes, and then iTunes is slow as fuck. And on top of that, the Apple cable, right, runs USB 2.0, which means you're limited at a slow transfer speed of like 10 megabytes a second, which is slower than a hard drive. Whereas if you're using, say for example, a Samsung, you don't need third-party software to access the files. You can use a Type-C cable, which transfers it up to gigabits a second, like a hundred times faster than an iPhone cable. This is why the law that stated that now Apple has to change to a Type C charger is such a good law. Because of the fact, like, anyone that says it stifles innovation, yeah, I will agree. It does stifle innovation, but when you have a standard like USB, that is innovated so frequently, it's constantly getting better and better every year. Like, having... If you want to move from phone to PC, it has to be Mac, really. Yeah, exactly. 
And that's what I'm saying. If I had 10 grand to spend on an iMac Pro, an iPhone Pro, um, iPad, and having a gaming Windows PC as well for video games, yeah, I'd be iPhone all the way. But unfortunately, I don't have that money. So, until they either make their products significantly cheaper, which they're not going to because they're a luxury brand, or make it so that they're compatible with other devices, no. Sorry. And obviously, like, being forced to use Type-C, right, it makes it... From an iPhone user's standpoint, I get that, oh, I'm going to have to find new chargers and whatnot. Fair enough. But you did that when you swapped from the 30-pin to the 8-pin. The really fat one that was on the old iPhones and the old iPods. When you swap to the lightning cable, you still had to do that anyways. It's just like one of those, except your cable can actually be used on everything. See, Android flagships are more expensive, but they have cheaper ones. Android flagships, some of them are a similar price, actually. I mean, you look at some of the iPhone Pros. £900, something like that. Some of the Samsung flagships, they're 800 Obviously, they do models that are ridiculously expensive because they're, like, insane. I think Apple's just going to go to MagSafe instead of Type-C, which would be the stupidest idea ever, because how the fuck are you supposed to transfer files there? Apple won't do it. They're not that stupid. They're stupid, but they're not that stupid. And I think there is a law that states that it has... If it is a smart device... It must be charged by Type-C. It cannot be, like, an alternative. So, removing Type-C, I think, would still break the law. I think it needs to have a Type-C charger. But if they figure out a way around it, it'd just be the stupidest idea that they've ever done. But, like, Type-C... Like, if everyone had a Type-C charger for a phone... Like, what do we all say? Oh, do you have an iPhone charger? No. Ah, uh, shit. Do you have an Android charger? Oh, no. Ah, uh, shit. Now, in five years' time, once everything is sort of... It's been implemented and whatnot, all we're going to say is, do you have a phone charger? Yes, here you go. Because everyone will have a phone charger. You'll be able to ask, ah, uh, can I borrow a phone charger? Or... Oh, I need to buy a phone charger. It'll be one charger. Like, how is that not appealing to people? Also, I got a German touring car. I picked the Mercedes because it's cool. So, woohoo. See, here's the thing I don't get about that point, right? If they were planning on using it, then why would... Um, why would they sit... Develop a lightning cable for one year if they missed out on Type C to then keep it for 10 years well beyond Type C upgrading, upgrading, upgrading again. Why would they keep lightning at the same point? Or why not just use their old connector for one more year and then use Type C? It just seems like stupid decisions from Apple ones that people will fall for and Apple fanboys will just go yeah that's fine you know oh Apple's having a brain dead moment yeah that's good no worries have you got my car on there uh, what do you mean on the uh, stream avatars I wouldn't know but uh, there's 25 cars on there so if you own a Ford Focus or a Prius or something. I do. Because they wanted the phone to be thinner. By putting a slightly thicker connector. I mean... I don't know. I wouldn't. I don't think I'd do. My controller's just killed itself. Let's uh, get this rebooted and... Uh... 
Try that again. I don't even know what the hell happened there. <laughs> My controller's just gone, nope. Nah, -uh. I'm out. There we go, much better. Yeah, no, I don't think I remember, unfortunately. Holy shit. I'm looking forward to, um... I, I, I would love to see... Oh, also, uh, I don't think I've brought this up, but Heinz mentioned, obviously, Android is far more superior and universality. I think that's... It's basically more universal, and that's 100% true. Like, Android is built like a computer, like a, a PC that's designed to detect stuff. Whereas... Oh, yeah, I don't think we've got Maserati on there. I don't think so. Um, yeah, where was I? Yeah, it's a lot more universal, but it's still, it's still not there, unfortunately. Like, iPhone, it, it doesn't even exist. Like, they're completely locked down to the point you can't use certain devices. Like, it's stupid. And here's the thing, I get the appeal of having a closed ecosystem. Because I, my Apple, uh, not Apple, my Samsung earbuds that I've got, you know, open the case, put them in, listen to music. Simple as. Connect straight to my phone. Perfect. But the difference is, I can do that with my PC as well. And it just comes up as a normal pair of earphones. Whereas the Apple AirPods are a nightmare. And anyone that brings up Apple security? No. No. Unfortunately, Apple security is not any more secure than any other system. As has been proven by Apple themselves. Apple is an easily exploitable ecosystem because it's its own separate thing. When you look at Android, Android is built by Google. When you look at Android, it is a Google brand. So if there is a vulnerability in all of the Android phones, oh look, Google will get on it and they will fix the vulnerability and send it out to all these other companies, okay? Apple, because it's its own thing, you're relying on only Apple to fix this problem. One individual company. Whereas, oh, there's, a, there's an issue. Apple, though, they pay $1 million if they find a flaw. Yeah, they do. But here's the thing. People don't use it for that. Like, they'll, they'll pay $1 million, but that is what they offer to, like, serious exploits. Exploits that can mean, like, bank details are being stolen from people. But at that point, a lot of those hackers will use that exploit first, and then report it afterwards, once it's pointless. If you find a bug that's like, oh, um, it accidentally calls 999 every... Like, if you sit on your phone in an awkward way. Oh yeah, we'll give you 20 quid for that. Like, Apple as a company, they they don't give out a lot. I watched an entire fucking video on it. And it, it's crazy. Like, Apple's security, they put all this advertising to say, oh, we're more secure. But they are not. They're, they're the same as every other company. And again, it's, it's why I'm like, Apple... Like, people who are Apple fanboys will just go suck it all up, be like, oh yeah, Apple says it's more secure. Ah, oh, it's more secure. It's more this. It's more that. 
It's just really funny to see. Love this chat, but I really need to go. Yeah, no worries. That's all good. Hopefully we can see you again in the future, though. We're going to be streaming a lot more now, so... I'll probably be live for another hour and a bit. All depends how long we go for. So, we'll see. So I play a little harder. Whoa, I got wide. Definitely make sure those notifications are turned on because uh, we're going to be streaming a lot more now. Cranking it up to the max. But yeah, going back to... Uh, what's it called? Um, the Apple... Type C debate. Yeah, it might stifle innovation. But do you really think Apple was this close to adopting a new format that was better than Type C? No, they weren't. Sure, when the Lightning cable came out, for the one year that it came out before Type C came out, it was faster than USB 2.0, micro USB. But it was faster by this much. Like, it was barely faster. But it was there. It was good. It charged much quicker. It was a decent connector. And then Type-C came out. And then another version of Type-C came out. And then another version. And now we're at the point where we can charge phones with like 100 watts of power. Charge a phone from flat to full in 10 minutes with type C and meanwhile an iPhone cable still cannot push past 10 watts 10% what a full I uh, type C cable can do the lightning cable cannot push past that like that's saying something about iPhone as a company it's coming on Finally, someone let me out of my cage. Time for me is nothing, cause I'm counting no age. No, I couldn't be there. No, you shouldn't be square. It's snare, intangible. Bet you didn't think so, I command you to. Panoramic view. Yeah, I make it all manageable. Pick and choose. Watch you. I need to work out how to sort out the delay as well, cause I need, um... What's it called? little bit of... Oh wait, no. The delay is because of the thingy. If I do this, I'll do it between uh, this thing and the next one. Because I should be able to change it. I've added a delay because of the fact that I was listening on Bluetooth headphones, and now I can technically remove the delay. He's coming on. I ain't happy. I'm feeling glad I got sunshine. In a bag, I'm useless. But not for long, the future. Child like a nature. You don't. That's a fallacy. Nice. 31,000 credits. I ain't happy. I'm feeling glad I got sunshine. In a bag, I'm useless, but not for long. The button's not working. Ah, fix it. In the bag version is better. I ain't happy. I'm in a bag, I got sunshine. In a bag, I'm useless. In a bag, the future is in a bag. I'm happy. I'm in a bag, I got sunshine. In a bag, I'm useless. In a bag, the future is in a bag. It's in a bag, it's in a bag. It's... That's such a good, that is the mean version. Get up and go. The 
This feels really weird playing this whilst listening to this song. Because Gran Turismo 5 came out within the same 12 month period as this game. Breath. Wrench. Can't slow down, I will be waiting for you. I can't stop. This is the world. Fuck. I got the wrong lyrics. Don't fuck around, this is a last chance. Played this track backwards and lost many brain cells yesterday. This circuit, right? I don't know what it is with this circuit, but going forwards as opposed to backwards, it looks like two completely different circuits. Playing this track in forwards as opposed to reverse, completely different tracks. And I don't think any track does it like Indianapolis does it because it feels completely different. If you look at, say, a track like, um, I'm trying to think of another example. Circuit of the Americas, that's a great one. You run that, uh, you're not supposed to because technically it is a one-way racetrack, but you run that one backwards, it looks like it does the other way, like it doesn't feel very different when you run it backwards. You look at, I don't know, Silverstone for example even, like it feels very similar backwards as it does forwards. This, it feels like a completely different layout, completely different circuit, because the way that the cars flow around the corners is completely different. This is almost a heavy braking zone. When you're going the other way. When you're going this way, it's fine. It doesn't matter. No, 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 no. Get up and go. Who they want you to be? By the way, we are about 40 views away from me gifting a channel subscription to anyone in chat. So feel free to share the stream out. Feel free to drop likes, as it really just helps for the channel. And uh, once we hit that 100 view mark, I'll be gifting a channel membership to someone in the chat. This is from uh, F1 22. Summer 2019, it's like a pipe dream. Yeah, I have. Actually looks quite good. For a Mustang, well, I like it. And that is a car that deserves the Mustang. I think it, I think we're on about the right car. 
sort of really aggressive looking Mustang. Marky, on the other hand, doesn't deserve it. Nope. Nuh uh. I mean, to be fair, I should expect the Mustang to sound good. Because the day that the Mustang doesn't sound good is the day the Mustang dies. And they were very lucky, actually, when they released the marquee that the Mustang didn't die that day. shifting aggressive shifting because you can go into the red line with this car you can go quite far into the red line actually it's about like well over 8,000 rpm before even needing to shift But if the wheels slip at any point, once it goes over 8,000, it'll instantly hit the red line. Like the red limiter. leaking fluids in a minute. Yeah, because it's a beamer. It'd be leaking fluids as soon as you start the engine. You don't have to be so strong. I can see a car in front of me. It's doing a really shit job. Also, don't forget about never use turn signals. Yep, never been used once. <laughs> Come on, 
on, come on, come on. Speed up, speed up. Whoop. Oh. Oh, it's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. No! Fuck. Oh, what? Almost lapped the car. We didn't quite get there. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>